recording so today we are going to start with measurement of resistance so this topic it has never been asked in the gate okay but you can see there are few topics that are mentioned exclusively like kelvin double bridge and megohm bridge so megohm bridge is used for measurement of high resistance whereas kelvin double bridge is used for measurement of low resistance so those two topics have been mentioned in your syllabus so that is why we are going to read this topic so no questions has been asked till now okay so this will be kind of a theoretical class only because there are no questions in this topic and the questions that might be asked i might take it in the next class okay so let us then begin with today's session and this remaining question okay so at the end of the class we are going to solve this so let us then begin so we are going to see measurement of resistance okay measurement of resistance so i can classify the measurement of resistance in three parts okay low resistance measurement medium resistance and high resistance measurement so i have classified the resistance measurement in three parts so in low resistance we measure resistance value which is less than 1 ohm okay which is less than 1 ohm in medium resistance we measure resistance value in between 1 ohm to usually either 10 to the power 5 or 10 to the power 6 ohm okay and in high resistance category we measure resistance value that is greater than 10 to the power 5 or 10 to the power 6 ohm okay so this is basically what the classification means the way in which we can measure the resistance so there are different different methods out of which this medium resistance method we have already seen this can be measured using wheatstone bridge even potentiometer we can use but potentiometer is not there in our syllabus okay so that is why we are not going to study about potentiometer so low resistance measurement we are going to see using your kelvin double bridge okay kelvin double bridge and high resistance measurement we are going to see one megohm bridge okay megohm bridge now in this medium resistance okay in this medium resistance there are few more ways in which we can measure but it has not been mentioned that exclusively in the syllabus but questions have been asked in the past okay so that is why we are going to see this topic also like ammeter voltmeter method okay then we have substitution method and one more method we have uh, i forgot that what was it ohm meter method yes okay ohm meter method so question have been asked from this and this okay so this was back i guess in 1990s one question was asked but this question means this topic questions have been asked like in 2016 once it has been asked then i think in 2002 or 2001 i don't exactly remember but twice there are two questions of this ammeter voltmeter method but it is not there written in our syllabus still we are going to study okay sorry so any doubt in this up till now see i have even written over here measurement of medium resistance so we are going to start with what we are going to start with medium resistance measurement of medium resistance the first method is what we are going to measure using ammeter voltmeter method okay so in ammeter voltmeter method what we have we have this unknown resistance unknown resistance it is connected across okay 
so here i have made one mistake so in ammeter voltmeter method what we do this rx is what this rx is your unknown resistance okay unknown resistance so we measure this unknown resistance by doing what by having one ammeter as well as voltmeter here also you can see we have one ammeter and voltmeter but the way in which we have connected it is basically two different types of configuration okay so this method usually you have seen in your measurement labs also that we measure unknown resistance by connecting voltmeter either across ammeter or resistance or we connect one ammeter across voltmeter and your unknown resistance okay so these are basically two methods or two configuration with the help of which we can connect or sorry we can measure rx okay now ideal ammeter ideal ammeter resistance of ideal ammeter is zero and that of ideal voltmeter it is what it is infinite okay it is infinite so if this is the case if your we are measuring ideal cases then rx is equal to what rx is equal to if this is your ideal voltmeter ammeter so whatever is the voltage and the current flowing through here so basically your reading of voltmeter divided by reading of ammeter will be your rx you guys agree to this or not tell me yes or no if your ammeter and voltmeter are ideal then this will be the cases okay but we know what that these cases are not possible resistance of ammeter is usually approximately equal to 0 or it is a very less value okay it is a very small value and resistance of your voltmeter it is approximately equal to infinite or it is one high value so let us then do the analysis of figure 1 means figure a and figure b i think here also this will be wrong okay so first let us do the analysis of figure a so case 1 case 1 is what if voltmeter is placed ahead of ammeter and your unknown resistance that means what voltmeter is basically measuring the voltage drop across this ammeter as well as this unknown resistance okay so here basically rm will be equal to v by i here this ammeter has approximately means it has a very less value of resistance and here it has a very high value of resistance but it's not infinite so rm or rx i should have written or it's okay i will write it as rm is equal to resistance measured okay resistance measured so here you can write rm also so rm is equal to the voltage drop across this voltmeter divided by the current that is flowing through this resistor now you can see this v okay whatever is the voltage measured it will be basically what it will be the voltage drop across this ammeter plus the voltage drop across this unknown resistance x okay 
it is the voltage across this unknown resistance x so now this is equal to va plus vx by i okay va plus vx by i this is the resistance that is measured so, okay i confused you guys over here so this is the resistance that is measured actual value or the true value true value of resistance it is equal to actually rx okay so this is the true value or you can even denote it using rt so measured resistance is this now va is actually equal to what so this will be equal to whatever is the current i flowing i into resistance of ammeter plus i into rx divided by i okay so this is what this is rm so rm is equal to what rm is equal to ra plus rx so basically what we are doing this measured value okay measured value of this rx we are calculating it as ra plus rx so there is a error of ra over here okay tell me is this clear or not is this clear so rm rm what i can write if i take rx common so this will be 1 plus ra by rx okay ra by rx where this ra by rx i am denoting it with epsilon r so this rm is equal to rx 1 plus epsilon r or you can write it as rm is equal to rt rt means true value okay 1 plus epsilon r now rm is approximately equal to rt if epsilon r tends to 0 okay if epsilon r tends to 0 now epsilon r will be tending to 0 if ra tends to 0 or rx tends to infinite but we already know over here that rx is one finite value so that means what for measuring a resistance value using this configuration if my ammeter resistance is very very less then i will be getting very less error tell me is this clear or not is it clear any doubt so this is the first way with the help of which we can measure the resistance, unknown resistance, okay? So note it down quickly. Noted? Noted? Tell me yes or no. Okay. So the next configuration we have is this one okay this is the next configuration so now here you can see basically if your voltmeter okay rv let me denote it with rv rv is basically what it is the resistance of voltmeter and this is very high value it is not infinite, it is a finite value that is very, very high. Okay, high value. So now, how do we basically measure over here? So you can see that Rm, similarly Rm is the measured value. So Rm will be equal to what? Same, V by I. But this time, actually the I we are measuring is this I. So here it will be what basically this will be IV and let this be IX. So V divided by IV plus IX. Okay. So now I can write it as V divided by IV is actually V by. So this is V. V by RV plus v by this will be ix will be equal to what v by rx 
so you can see rm is equal to rv into rx divided by rv plus rx any doubt any doubt in this so now i will cross multiply this rm into rv plus rm into rx is equal to rv dot rx so what i can do over here let me take rx as common okay i will take rx as common over here so this will be rm dot rv is equal to rx rm minus rv or rx sorry i should have taken rm common so let me take rm common over here uh, so this was actually okay i shouldn't have written it like this wait a minute yeah this was actually okay so let me take out rv common wait fine so just give me a second so rx rx uh, okay okay let me take rm is equal to rv dot rx let me take rx common so this will be 1 plus rv by rx this is common is what rx so rx rx cancel or rm is equal to rv divided by 1 plus rv by rx okay or you can write this as rm is equal to rv 1 plus epsilon r okay now rm now why is this coming like this have i done some mistake means i have want to show you one more result for which i was manipulating over here just let me check just give me a second don't note okay so this will be okay fine so this is okay yeah so now you can note so this is actually rx divided by 1 plus epsilon r okay now for this rm to be approximately equal to rx epsilon r should be equal to 0 should tend to 0 now this will be tending to 0 either if rx tends to 0 or rv tends to infinite now what we know basically rx cannot tend to zero because this is one finite value so if rv tends to infinite then what we can do we can over here basically approximate the value of rm it will be equal to rx that means the measured value will be approximately equal to your true value okay any doubt in this 
any doubt any doubt in this okay so now if we have been given a certain resistance okay certain resistance so how do we basically select means you might be knowing what is the range of this rx okay you might be knowing that it might actually be between like 50 ohm 100 ohm you will have a range so how do you basically select which configuration to use okay so if you see if you see both the expression okay see let this be expression one And let this be equation 2. Okay, this is your expression 2. So now you can see in both this expression, okay, we are measuring the same resistance only. We are measuring the same resistance. So here epsilon r should be tending to 0. Here also you can see epsilon r should tend to 0. Both of the condition are same. That means in both the cases here this is your epsilon r. This is your epsilon r. And in the first case epsilon r is what? Ra by rx. So in both the cases when epsilon r is tending to 0, you can see that R measured is approximately equal to R true. That means in both the cases, this epsilon R is same. So if I equate it, Ra by Rx is equal to Rx by Rv. So this implies Rx is equal to under root of Ra dot Rv. So this was asked once, okay, for this method this expression was asked once now we should know if rx if rx is greater than ra dot rv then we use configuration a okay we use this configuration this one if Rx is less than under root Ra dot Rv. So we use configuration B. So this is experimentally proved. Okay. Tell me any doubt. So this was also asked once in exam. So this property, this sorry, this statement and this one was asked once in your gate examination. Okay. Any doubt in this? Whatever I have explained till now. So noted, everything noted, tell me. Quickly note this down. <coughs> noted. Okay. So let us move to the next method. So next what we have next is your substitution method. This method is not asked. Okay. Not asked ever. But still from theoretical point of view, we should know this. What is this substitution method? So in substitution method, this method is also used in your labs only. Okay. So what we have, we have an unknown resistance here. Actually, R is your unknown resistance this s it is basically a variable resistance or a standard you can say standard variable resistance okay and this small r okay the small r is basically one regulating resistance regulating resistance means what regulating resistance is basically the resistance that we were using over here 
if you remember this one okay we were introducing resistance in the path in the modified D sortie bridge using r1 the same work is done by this regulating resistance also it is actually introducing resistance induced resistance in a path if there is very very low resistance and if resistance in the path is high basically we set this value of small r to zero okay so this is basically a regulating resistance okay and this switch this is basically one alternating switch so let this be position one this be position two so how do we measure the unknown resistance unknown resistances are so what we do basically first we connect this switch to position two okay we connect this switch to position two and we note down the value of ammeter Suppose if for a particular value of R, this R is unknown, my ammeter is pointing to, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, everything is in milliampere. So let us assume that it is pointing to 2 milliampere. Okay, so this is what? This is your value of this ammeter when I have connected the switch to position 2. Please don't note down. Let me first explain, then you can note down. So what happens now in the next instance, I connect this switch to S2, sorry, to your first position. Now, if I connect it to first position, it might happen what either the deflection of the ammeter might be in this way or it might be here. So what I do, I start to manipulate this S, I start to manipulate this S such that I can bring it to the exact same position when I had this R connected. So the moment I bring this ammeter to the exact position when R was connected, that means the value of this S and R will be same at that point because same amount of current is flowing in this circuit and only thing that has been kept constant is this resistance. Okay. So now I can measure this R in terms of S. So when this is happening, this is happening when your ammeter reading for both the cases is the same. So at that particular time, the value of this S will be equal to R. Tell me, is it clear? Is it clear? Okay. So note this down. Note this down. Along with this, can anyone tell me what it means? What is the factor? that I need to keep constant over here to get zero errors in the measurement to avoid errors. What should I keep constant over here? Small. Okay, think, uh, tell me. Yes. Pardon, I couldn't uh, hear you. Regulating resistance. Regulating resistance, no, means regulating resistance, it is actually a constant value only. It is a constant value. Before the start of experiment only, it is a constant value. So I will even explain what is the actual significance of this regulating resistance. I will explain. Okay. So this method is used for measurement of medium resistance medium resistance. Now let me ask what happens if I measure a very high value of resistance? What will happen? Think quickly. So note this down whatever I have explained while noting think what is actually the key means what is the factor that I should keep constant over here so that to avoid errors. Have you guys noted this? Noted? Tell me yes or no. Okay, noted. So now let me ask you, what will happen if I measure very high value of resistance?
when i measure very high value of resistance okay let it be let it be so basically this experiment it is based on what i am measuring what over here what parameter am i measuring current okay current you are measuring so for keeping the current constant in this two cases what should i need to keep constant what should i keep constant what should i keep constant i should keep this battery emf constant why because we know battery emf if you draw the vi characteristics of a ideal battery or a voltage source it looks like this this is for ideal but practically it is like this use some different color okay the vi characteristics is something like this for an practical voltage source and this blue color line is for a ideal voltage source so you can see the current is dipping okay so here the basic thing that i am measuring i am measuring resistance with respect to current okay so current should be kept constant but here you can see basically the battery profile it is like this so that is why in order to avoid error we use what we use high capacity battery okay because high capacity battery when we use high capacity battery the vi characteristics it might look something like this I don't know what is happening. This line is not. Okay. So this is what? This is your. Basically, this red color line is that of a high what? High capacity battery. So in order to avoid error, we use what? We use high capacity battery so that current remains constant in your both the cases. Is it clear? Now, why we use this R? if suppose i am measuring a value of resistance if i am measuring a value of resistance that is very very small assume like 2 ohm okay 2 ohm or chalo i have said basically this is what medium resistance so let it be like 11 ohm or 12 ohm now i am using a high capacity battery i am using what i am using a high capacity battery to do what to avoid error and the resistance in this path it is very very less approximately i have assumed it to be 11 ohm okay unknown resistance is very less that is 11 ohm so now what will happen very high value of current will start to flow through this loop which might damage this ammeter okay or what might happen the wires may get heated and it may melt causing the circuit breakdown so to avoid that we have this value of resistance a regulating resistance so now what i do i set this value of regulating resistance to a particular value let me assume i have set it to 100 ohm now you can see basically the resistance in this circuit it is 111 ohm which is very very higher compared to the 11 ohm so this is actually the purpose of this regulating resistance that it introduces a high means a value of resistance which doesn't cause circuit breakdown tell me is it clear or not is it clear any doubt in this any doubt so next we will be studying kelvin double bridge or okay so now we have what we have your measurement okay so first i didn't tell you ohm meter method ohm meter okay what is this ohm meter method so in ohm meter method what we do so it is quite similar to this method only this method this method so in ohm meter method what we do 
so here we don't have both this voltmeter and ammeter simultaneously we don't keep so what we do basically we know according to ohm's law v is equal to ir okay v is equal to ir so that means voltage has a direct relationship with current sorry voltage has direct relationship with resistance and current has inverse relationship with resistance so we take help of these two what we do we calibrate this ammeter in terms of resistance or this voltmeter in terms of resistance and that is actually what that is your ohm meter method so in ohm meter method what we do we calibrate either ammeter or voltmeter in terms of resistance okay any doubt in this so this will never be asked to you guys okay be rest assured it will never be asked because these are all ohm meter method it is not there in syllabus but still i have covered you should be knowing that if you guys are appearing for esc engineering services anyone nitish shishir you guys are attempting engineering services this year अरे येस नो बोल सकते हो कि नहीं बोल सकते हो एटलीस्ट यू गैस कैन रिप्लाई नीतीश यस बोथ ऑफ यू आर ओके सो इफ यू गैस आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर इंजीनियरिंग सर्विसेज सो आई थिंक नीतीश इज फ्रॉम इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन सो यू आर गिविंग फ्रॉम विच ब्रांच नीतीश ओके ईसी एंड शिशिर इज फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रिकल so you can all shishir you are from electrical or ec and double so that is okay so do one thing okay from now on only prepare simultaneously for gs as well as for your this thing objective type of paper okay so gs will be a little bit tough it's not like that you cannot prepare okay gs is little bit tough and one thing you should remember that for clearing gs general studies part or the paper one part okay so you should be solving previous year questions okay previous year questions that is very very important so you will get ample amount of time for this thing what means but if you solve mains question paper na mains paper so it will even help you in your gate exam okay it will help you in your gate exam so it is my suggestion that if you are pre preparing for esc as well as gate focus on mains paper as well because it will help you in your gate also but keep one thing in mind that gate syllabus and esc syllabus for ec from ec point of view as well as electrical it is approximately 75 to 80% syllabus is similar okay 75 to 80% similar now i will say one thing that focus mainly on gate this time esc i think prelims paper will be in the january month of january or march february february when any idea i think yeah 19th 19th So nineteenth means there will be gate paper. Gate exam will be there. Hopefully, it's not for double E or EC. Means we can expect that much that nineteenth. So gate will be on fourth and fifth and eleventh, twelfth, I think. What fourth and eleventh? Fourth, fourth and fifth, fifth yes. and eleventh and twelfth. Okay, only four days for gate exam. Yes, sir. Okay, then it's okay. तब तो कोई टेंशन ही नहीं है तो दैट इज फाइन ओके तो आई विल से व्हाट फोकस मेनली ऑन गेट फोकस मेनली ऑन गेट अलोंग विद लाइक गिविंग टू टू थ्री आवर्स ओके टू टू थ्री आवर्स एवरी अल्टरनेट डे फॉर जीएस पेपर्स ओके 
पेपर नंबर वन ओके लाइक दैट दैट थिंग व्हाट इंजीनियरिंग ड्राइंग एंड आई हैव द सिलेबस आल्सो विद मी समवेयर जस्ट लेट मी चेक यस सो इंजीनियरिंग सर्विसेज इवन इज दिस पेपर टू आई नो एग्जैक्टली या सो पेपर वन जनरल स्टडीज एंड इंजीनियरिंग एप्टीट्यूड लाइक ethics and value in engineering profession ict basics of material science okay and basic of energy and environment all those things okay so for that i will say every alternate day dedicate like 2 to 3 hours or even when you are tired okay after studying technical part you can give like 1 or 2 hours okay every day for studying gs so that will be very good so i couldn't clear mains exam okay i couldn't study for mains exam because i was in my masters at that time means uh, masters was very very difficult for me because i went from private college to iit and studies it was i was feeling very difficult over there so i had to focus more on mtech i thought i might be like i can take this mains exam lightly okay so back in 2014 i had cle cleared even this one also prelims exam but i couldn't clear mains exam because i didn't study for it and after that means i never got the opportunity or you can even say i never studied for engineering services exam okay so don't do like that engineering services is a very good examination if you are able to crack you will be means in a very respectable position in like 4 5 years after cracking the exam okay so that is very very good exam so i will say focus on engineering services also so that is good chalo so where were we so i was telling you about measurement of low resistance okay so now measurement of low resistance actually resistance value that are less than 1 ohm those are classified as what they are classified okay point 1 sorry wait a minute see here i have written 1 this should be 0.1 i am sorry so resistance value less than 0.1 ohm is termed as low resistance now the problem with measuring low resistance is that what happens see this is our if you have seen a resistance okay so we have the ceramic coating over resistance color coded so we have this lead terminals so even this lead wires they have resistance now you might say sir they are actually made of copper or silver which are very good conductors of electricity but still even if that is the case there will be a comparable amount of resistance when we are taking it with such low values so to avoid that when we measure your lower value of resistance we have basically four leads okay we have four leads so this is cc dash so these are your current leads from these two leads we measure the current flowing through the smaller value of resistance and then we have pp dash so pp dash is usually what this is your potential lead through the help of this two leads we measure the voltage across the resistance now this two leads are connected exactly near to the elements okay like this okay so any doubt any doubt in this okay fine so once it was asked in your engineering services exam that low resistance measurement it can be done using how many leads so you should know that basically low resistance are measured using four terminals okay four terminals okay so now this normal low resistance you can measure it with what you can measure it with a wheatstone bridge also with the modification of wheatstone bridge i shouldn't write it as kelvin's double bridge this is actually a kind of modified beat stone bridge i will ask you basically where you are going to face problem so now you can see over here this s is actually the variable resistance with the help of which we are going to find this r okay this is your r so now what is this r so r is actually the 
अननोन फर्स्ट लेसन देन यू कैन नोट अननोन रेजिस्टेंस ओके और एल्स यू कैन साइमल्टेनियसली नोट ऑल्सो दिस इज नॉट दैट मच कंसेप्चुअल सो आर इज अननोन रेजिस्टेंस विच इज लो now as i told you what i have told you that this r or the unknown resistance is actually affected by the what by the resistance of this lead terminal so if suppose i take this conventional resistance which has very very low value so what will happen okay so look over here i have assumed i have done what i have assumed the lead resistance okay to be centered over here lead resistance i have taken over here and the value of lead resistance i am assuming it to be small r so what is small r small r is your lead resistance and i have assumed it to be a distributed element okay i haven't assumed it a lumped element i have assumed it a distributed element now what will happen during measurement of low resistance that basically we are going to see your lead resistance over here okay lead resistance and can anyone tell me what happens when the resistance is low in any branch what might happen when resistance is low what happens in that branch higher current and what happens when there is higher current flowing in any one of the branch in a circuit heat very good so heat dissipation will be more heat generation of heat it will be more and it will cause what it will cause error in the circuit or it might cause basically the circuit to break down so now let us see the analysis of this modified wheatstone bridge okay suppose if suppose now i don't know how if suppose i connect this basically this is one of the terminal of galvanometer which is free to move across this point m and n now what is this m and n i have assumed the lead resistance to be a distributed parameter which is distributed over this m and n okay so if suppose i connect it to a particular point d now at this particular point d let me assume that the resistance of this part uh, so this is r1 means from m to d it is r1 and from d to n it is r2 okay such that such that p by q is equal to r1 by r2 now you might ask sir from where did we get this i will say experimentally while performing the experiment you found out this value that p by q is equal to r1 by r2 okay you found this so now what might happen so in this case when the bridge is balanced okay when the bridge is balanced so you will get what so at that time uh, this will be basically p into s plus r2 because you can see in this terminal this is the point so this resistance is going to be added with s so s plus r2 is equal to q into r plus small r1 tell me is it clear is it clear okay so now r plus r1 is equal to p by q s plus r2 so p by q already we have this value it is r1 by r2 so r plus r1 is equal to p by q into sorry now i am going to substitute this value r1 by r2 into s plus r2 so now if i solve this so r plus r1 is equal to s into r1 by r2 plus r1 okay 
R2, R2 will cancel. So this R1, R1 will also cancel. So R is equal to S into R1 by R2. So you can see the resistance I have measured. It is that of this unknown low resistance. I have basically done what? I have removed this, basically this cap small r or the lead resistance which was distributed. Okay. And here you can even write this R1 by R2. So it will be what? You can rewrite this as S into P by Q. If you substitute this expression once again over here. Okay. Any doubt in this? Any doubt? Now, theoretically, this seems very easy. Now, practically, why can't you use this method? Practically. Theoretically, it seems very easy that I can do everything and it seems very simple. But practically, why can't we do this? So, this is basically the modification of Wheatstone bridge for measuring low resistance. Now, why can't I do so? That balance that we found is not possible practically. Pardon, I couldn't hear you. The balance uh, that we found the P by Q is equals to R1 by R2. What? Is not Your voice P is breaking, Nitesh. So, could you repeat once again? <coughs> Sir, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible now. Uh, so the balance uh, that we are finding for uh, P by Q equals to R1 by R2 is not possible because of very small resistance. No, it's possible. It's possible. So this is basically a ratio. This is basically a ratio. this is a ratio you can get it okay but the problem is that i told you that this points need to be found out experimentally okay this point needs to be found out experimentally and how are you going to measure this r1 and r2 okay r1 and r2 how are you going to measure that so that is very very small value and experimentally, you cannot find out this R1 and R2. So that is very difficult thing. Even if you know that P is like 1 kilo ohm and Q is 2 kilo ohm. So how are you going to make this ratio of R1 by R2? 1 is to 2. So that needs to be a lot of hit and trial method needs to be done over here. So that is why this method is not feasible for our measurement purpose. We don't use it. So then what can we do over here? So that is why we have one modified version of Wheatstone bridge, which is known as Kelvin's double bridge. Now why it is known as Kelvin's double bridge? We are going to see. First, this bridge was invented by Kelvin. Okay. And why double bridge? Because there are two bridges in this circuit. Okay, two bridges in this circuit. See, in the last case, what happened? Finding out this part was extremely difficult, experimentally. Theoretically, it seems very okay. But experimentally, this was very difficult to find out. So, here, what we have done, we have taken two bridges. Okay, two bridges have been taken and... This is one of the bridge you can see. Okay. So this is one of the bridges. You can see over here. This is one bridge. One more bridge we have over here. So this, this, just give me a second. So there are two bridges. Yeah. 
so this is one more bridge we have over here bridge circuit okay along with this two terminal from this point so there are two bridges present so that is why the name double bridge now see basically how we manipulate or how we avoid this condition here basically this p this q the small p and small q these are all known resistance known resistance okay so this is means i myself can select the value of this p q capital p q and small p q i am selecting the value of this p q such that p by q is e actually equal to small p by small q now i can do this very well okay i can do this because these are not unknown values like in the previous case this value of complete r1 r2 it was unknown to me okay i had to experimentally find out now here this is known to me i can select the value of resistance such that this condition is being followed here also this s is unknown i am going to vary this s and this r is actually the same thing unknown resistance low and this small r is actually the lead resistance which i have done what i have over here this is in your distributed parameter or distributed form same thing whatever i have done over here same thing i have done over here what is this rb this is basically the internal resistance of this battery rb so now let us see what is happening tell me up to this point is it clear any doubt any doubt okay so this bridge might come in your examination okay this bridge might come in your examination so see the analysis very carefully so if you look at this p q n r so it is something like this so this these three points are forming a delta okay delta where this is p this is q and this is r okay this is r so now i am converting this delta back to star so let this be x y z so x is equal to p dot q by p plus q plus r y is equal to p dot r sorry p plus q plus r and z is equal to q r p plus q plus r okay so what i have done i have converted this delta to star so this is where is your original diagram so now i will be doing what i will be changing the diagram or else it's okay even in this only we can do So now what you can see you can see over here that basically this is your x this is your y this is your z okay so this is your z so now at balance condition at balance condition what will happen So let me write over here at balance condition. 
so this x it is in series with the galvanometer resistance so there will be no contribution of this x so p into s plus z is equal to q into r plus y tell me if you can see this or not tell me if this is clear or not if it is clear up to this point please note down so have you noted this diagram have we noted this or not so quickly do quickly first up to this point please do it just give me a second is this diagram visible tell me yes or no fine quickly note it down now and tell me yes or no noted okay fine so now what you can see tell me one thing can we do actually your see now what we are doing so if we solve this so p into s z is what it is qr divided by p plus q plus r and q into r r is what okay, so r is unknown to us y is p dot r p plus q plus r okay so let me do what let me bring this q over this side so you have to do one more step so this q over here so not now what i will do i will substitute this value of p by q as small p by q okay small p by q and now what i will do i will take this term inside the bracket is equal to small p small p by q into s plus small p by q into qr by p plus q plus r so q q cancel so this is same exact term pr by p plus q plus r so this gets cancelled so what i get r is equal to small p by q into s or small p by q is capital p by q into s so once again you can see i am getting the value of r free from this lead resistance okay free from this lead resistance so this is basically what this method is simple compared to the last method where we had to experimentally find this value tell me did you understand how we do basically your manipulations in the kelvin double bridge tell me yes or no is it clear any doubt in this any doubt if there is no doubt you can note this down sir actually uh, in some of the questions i came pardon i can't hear you sir am i audible yeah Sir, in some of the questions I came across on this particular topic, uh, in that in, uh, small p and q was also given, and they had incorporated those values also. So, uh, is there what I am time? not able to hear you? What you are telling? 
means there is very noise in your voice. Shishir, are you able to hear him? No, sir. There's voice and it's also echoing. Yes, so that is the problem. So, Nitish, can you hold the mic properly? Sir, am I audible now? Uh, now it's little bit clear. Okay. Uh, sir, actually, in some of the questions I came across from this particular topic, uh, mm -hmm. that, that there was uh, like value of small p, uh, small q and small r also given. And they mm -hmm. had incorporated that into the equation to find the uh, value of unknown r. So, uh, they have incorporated what? The small p and small q. Uh, uh, value which was given in the question. Huh. So that is okay. Like, uh, uh, is there any like uh, addition to this formula also? Because in a case only, also I found that there was some bit addition to this. Uh, addition case. means what you are telling me? What addition? Uh, like the uh, end end result of R that we found as p by two. Yes, no, no, no. Addition. You don't have to do anything. See, if you have been given exact Kelvin double bridge, okay, exact Kelvin double bridge. So you already know the end result will be equal to R is equal to P by Q into S. Okay. So you know this. If you know the exact Kelvin that this configuration has been given to you and they are asking that this value of this distributed value of R is like 2 ohm this value is like 5 kilo ohm this is 6 kilo ohm okay and this bridge is getting balanced let me assume at what this is one experimental means random value i am taking so this bridge is getting balanced for s is equal to means this shouldn't be in kilo ohm let this be 5 ohm 6 ohm and this particular bridge is getting balanced at 2 ohm for the value of s. Find what is value of r. So you know what r is equal to p by q into s. Okay. So p value of p is 5 by 6 into 2. So that is 10 divided by 6 or 5 by 3. So you know this that this is what this is your Kelvin double bridge. So there is no need to add this 2 ohm in this value of R because this is what this is measuring your low value of resistance. Tell me now is it clear Were you asking the same thing or were you asking something else? Yes, sir. I was asking the same thing. It is clear. Now. Okay, fine. Okay. So next is what next we have is measurement of high resistance. Okay. Measurement of high resistance or basically the resistance value which is greater than 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 6 ohm, we generally classify them under high resistance, okay? High resistance. So, Nitish, one thing tell me, are you solving AK Sahani? Hello? Achha, nike saani, don't solve that book, okay? Because if you keep on solving, you can keep it as your reference, but if you solve that book, na, it is very, very vast book. So it is better for this topic, for this subject, measurement. Please just see your previous year question of gate and previous year questions of ESE. That's it. Nothing else you need to see because even the topics I am teaching, Okay, even the topics I am teaching, they are also very, very specific, very, very specific. See, like this over here, I will show you. See, I will tell you this measurement of voltage, current, power. Okay, these are very much related to your what moving iron instrument, PMMC, permanent magnet moving coil instrument. But I will not be teaching those sub this topic. Why? Because it is not given in the syllabus. So these these subjects, now this like electrical and electronic measurement, then like one more subject you guys have for instrumentation. I know like optical instrumentation and process control. They are very much a disconnected topic. 
means none of the topics are actually matching with one another okay there is no relationship over here just for the sake of increasing the syllabus they have added this topic that's it like if you see for digital electronics so first what we study we study logic gate then we study what we study your boolean algebra okay then we study what we study number system so there is a connection between all the topic then after number system we go for combination circuit then after combination circuit we go for sequential circuit then after sequential circuit we go for adc dac so there is a continuity in all the topics but here you will find there is no continuity in the topics okay there is no continuity so that is why i will say avoid ak sahani why because in that book there is continuity in the topics and you won't be able to understand which topics to leave which topic to study okay so this is actually a very very big problem when we are studying such kind of topics so it is actually fine if we study just from the syllabus only okay any doubt in this so keep this thing in mind so where were we measurement of high resistance so measurement of high resistance you can see there is one topic which is named as megohm bridge see they even haven't written i told na there is no continuity in the topic see in instrumentation here they haven't written even in electrical it is not even written but in instrumentation under bridges it is written wheatstone bridge kelvin kelvin double bridge not even kelvin double bridge is written just kelvin bridge then you can see megohm bridge is written so now there is no actually there is no connection between the topics no connection okay so that is why we have to see this megohm bridge so now basically what megohm bridge is used for measuring your high value of resistance okay high value of resistance so usually higher value of resistance okay high resistance like in your cables and all cables have very very high resistance okay so when we measure high resistance it has three terminals okay so a and b it is actually what it is n case means these are the terminal of high resistance along with that we have a g terminal now this g is not actually ground this is actually the guard terminal guard terminal so usually while we do modeling in a circuit in your network we denote it like this but actually your high resistance it looks something like this the material is connected through like this this is your guard terminal this is your a this is b now by default there is a very very high value of resistance between this guard terminal which we denote it with r1 and r2 now these are basically the resistance this r1 and r2 these are actually the resistance of your insulating medium see whenever we are measuring high resistance okay high resistance so at that time even the insulating medium is acting as a resistance which is going to be measured along with this unknown resistance unknown value of high resistance like in the previous case when we were measuring your unknown low resistance at that time this lead terminal 
even the negligible resistance of the lead terminals they were also measured to avoid those we used what we used kelvin double bridge similarly when we are measuring high value of resistance at that time even the insulating medium okay it is also being measured while measuring the unknown resistance tell me is it clear so this is your guard terminal this is a this is b any doubt in this tell me yes or no so now basically in a circuit when we are using mega ohm bridge it might look like this you can write this as your guard terminal this is b this is a this you can write it as rx this as r1 and this as r2 okay or you can even draw it like this whichever way you want this is your guard terminal this is a this is b this is rx this is r1 this is r2 whichever way you feel comfortable so now when we use actually your what a weed stone bridge to measure such kind of resistance okay so i haven't drawn over here so let me draw see a very very high value of resistance it is modeled like this so i will replace over here this is your unknown resistance along with the unknown resistance i have the resistance of the insulating medium r1 and r2 okay r1 and r2 let us assume some values okay let me show you basically how this r1 and r2 are going to affect this value of rx okay so let me take one random example so let this be 100 kilo ohm uh this be somewhere around 10 kilo ohm okay 10 kilo ohm this is s this is variable this is rx let this rx value it be your 100 i'm taking a very high value 100 mega ohm along with that let this be 150 mega ohm and even r2 be 150 mega ohm i have taken very very high values okay so now what happens suppose your bridge is balanced for some particular value of s see the true value of unknown resistance is what it is rx so that is what 100 mega ohm but see very carefully when your bridge is balanced basically this what resistance i am going to measure i am going to measure the resistance of this combination this combination resistance i am going to measure now what is this you can see actually rx is parallel to series combination of r1 and r2 so rx is 100 parallel with 150 1 plus 150 that is 300 so this will be 100 into 300 by 400 So this is twenty five. So you can see, I will be measuring seventy five mega ohm using this bridge. Okay, seventy five mega ohm I am going to measure, but the true value is what? It is hundred mega ohm. There is very very high value of error in this particular bridge because when bridge is balanced, what will be the case? Basically. this into this is equal to this into this so for particular value of s this bridge will be balanced but when it is balanced also i will be measuring the resistance of this complete arm not of this rx are you getting my point are you getting my point what i am trying to say okay so then there is some error so to avoid this error what we do then what we do what can we do means i have erased all this so it's okay
fine so now to avoid this what can we do see look so this i had taken as 100 mega ohm this was 150 mega ohm this is 150 mega ohm so now what we can do so this let this be p this be q this be s and this is our unknown resistance can anyone tell me what can we do so this is our guard terminal simply in mega ohm bridge what we do we connect this guard terminal over here the moment i do this what is happening you can see this 150 mega ohm one of its terminal is connected over here another is over here so this 150 mega ohm now i can remove it means let this diagram be over here next diagram let me draw so this 150 mega ohm now i can remove it from here So, it's one of the terminal was present over here, another was over here. So, you can see now it is in parallel with P and this 150 mega ohm, it will come over here, this side. Means one of the terminal is present over here and another is over here. So, this is also 150 mega ohm. Now tell me, in any way, when I am changing this, will my reading get disturbed? Tell me yes or no. Simply by making this manipulation, will I get 100 mega ohm or not? Tell me yes or no. See, now automatically this value is going to set according to this. Okay. And when I have a parallel value, this galvanometer has very low resistance. Okay. So when a low resistance is in parallel with your high resistance, nothing is going to happen. This will be approximately equal to low. And now this value of resistance, this will be what? P parallel with this high value of resistance. So even P is very, very less. In this particular case, I had taken 100 kilo ohm. So this will be also approximately equal to 100 km only. So now you can see I have made this resistance, this arm free from the insulating resistance. In this particular arm, only your unknown resistance is present. Now your bridge is going to measure 100 mega ohm. Tell me yes or no. Tell me. Is it clear? Okay, one thing I forgot to tell you, one thing I forgot to tell you, once again come back to Kelvin double bridge, see, one of the problem was what, while we were doing over here, it was of your, that the resistance, the resistance we were measuring, actually your lead resistance were also added, then one more thing I told you, that there might be error due to what, it, there might be error due to heat generation. So over here, how to avoid heat generation, how to nullify the effect of heat generation. So I will tell you basically to nullify the effect of heat generation, the same experiment is performed, but by reversing the polarity of this battery. Okay. And then we take actually average of two values, average of two values we take, then actually your heat generation effect is being nullified. Tell me yes or no. So note this point, it might be asked in your engineering services exam that how do we avoid your heat generation problem in Kelvin double bridge. So you have to say that basically we take two measurement. In the first measurement, we keep the battery polarity intact. In the next experiment, we reverse the polarity of the battery and then we take the two result of two experiment we take the mean of the values and that is actually your true value which is free from the heat generated, heat generation. Is it clear? Any doubt? Fine. So now, mega ohm bridge is also over. Okay. 
this was actually the principle of megohm bridge okay so you can see just a simple manipulation that we have done to avoid your high resistance value so this was all about measurement of resistance okay measurement of resistance there are no other topic that we have to study so this was all about your kelvin's double bridge and all those things now we are left with few questions from the last class those we are going to cover this question what is the answer this one answer b sorry Nitish, what about you? Sir, actually, I got uh, confused because X is the reactance element and the phase balance zone factor. So this is actually magnitude, magnitude. X is what? Even if you don't take magnitude, let it be X is one by omega c. So where is any complex part? This will be a simple number, a real number. And Shishir, how are you getting zero? Hello, I will solve. I will solve. In the bridge circuit shown in the figure, when x is equal, x c by r is equal to one, then the voltmeter reads. So the voltmeter is reading what? It is reading your magnitude value. Okay. So let us assume this point is V A. This is V B, okay? V A V B. Now you might say, sir, is the bridge balanced? Is the bridge not balanced? The bridge is not balanced, very obviously, because the phase condition is not going to satisfy over here, because resistance has phase zero. This is also has the phase zero. This also has phase zero. This will have phase minus ninety degree, okay? So obviously, phase of the impedance is not going to be same. so bridge is unbalanced so your voltmeter is not going to read zero value obviously option b is wrong so shishir did you get my point yes sir last class only we had discussed this much okay so this you should have kept in your mind so now what i am going to do basically this detector voltmeter it is going to measure what let this be v it is going to measure the magnitude of va minus vb okay it is going to measure the magnitude so let me write so if i apply voltage divider so this will be 10 into r by r plus r minus 10 into so this will be what so this is the what is this this is the reactance part this is not impedance so you have to write when you are applying voltage divider you have to write impedance you have written this so this minus okay this minus so there will be magnitude i am not writing magnitude okay if in the end i get a negative sign i am going to make it positive so this minus sign i am removing it from here and i am putting a plus sign over here okay so now see very carefully this is what This is five plus ten j x c divided by r minus j x c. Now you can see there is one relationship given that x c is equal to r. So try to put it over here. Five plus ten j r divided by r minus j r. So r r will cancel. so this will be 5 plus j10 divided by 1 minus j now i have to just solve this to get the answer so this will be 5 plus j means what if i write it in your phase in your magnitude phase form so this will be one angle of 90 degree and 10 is basically a real number so if i have to represent 10 so this will be 10 angle of 0 so these two are in product so obviously magnitude is going to multiply and phase is going to add and what about this one 1 minus j 1 minus j lies in which quadrant so it lies over here 
so magnitude of 1 minus j will be root 2 and what about your phase so phase will be minus 45 degree okay phase will be minus 45 because it is in your fourth quadrant so now let us solve this one so this will be 5 uh, plus 10 angle of uh, sorry 10 by root 2 if I take this above, so this will be 135 degree. So 135 degree means in your second quadrant. So now if you solve this, so this will be 5 plus 10 by root 2 into minus 1 by root 2 plus j 1 by root 2. So this will be what? This root 2 root 2 will cancel out. And this will be 5 plus 10 by 2 one, minus 1 plus j. So this is 5. And this gives you what? This gives you uh, 5 minus 5 plus 5j. So 5, 5 cancels. This is 5j. So you can see this voltmeter is going to read the magnitude. See, I have written over here. So magnitude is what? Magnitude will be 5 volt. As simple as that. Tell me any doubt in this? Any? So, this was also a very good question. Okay, very good question. So, next, this question tell me what is the answer? Thirty three point three three. So, what is this bridge? Anderson very good so we have to solve this Anderson bridge it's okay so what is said if the deflection of the galvanometer in the bridge circuit shown in the figure is zero that means bridge is balanced then the value of rx in ohm is now if you start Converting this bridge to means this delta to star, there will be a problem because Rx is unknown. So, never do this. Instead of doing this, it is better if we do start to delta manipulation over here. Okay. So, this arm, this be x, this be y, this be z. So, x is equal to what? 100 into 100 by 100, 100, 200, so this will be 400, so this is 25, x is 25 ohm, y is equal to what, so this will be 100 into 200 by 400, so this will be 50 ohm, and z will be also 50 ohm, okay, z is also 50 ohm. So now, if you see, if you manipulate this, so this arm is 100, this is what, this is also 100 ohm, okay. So this x will come in series with the galvanometer, okay, and where is y, okay. So y will come in series with this, right? So, where is our, so this is Rx, okay, okay, so this will, Y will come with this one, plus Y, so Y is 50, so this will become, one fifty. So have I done some mistake or what? So X will go. No sir, it's okay. And where is this? I means I am not able to. Why 
why am i not able to see this terminal said this will be replaced by z just wait a minute so this y will go with this one rx is still present okay so z will remain over here so one of the terminal of z yes so z will remain over here what is z z is 50 ohm okay so now it's correct so now what is rx so rx into 150 is equal to 500 So Rx is equal to 500 by 150. So this is 10 by 3. So I am getting 3.33. How are you guys getting like 33.33? Have I done some mistake? Huh? Eh? Tell me yes or no. One fifty. This why? Why five thousand? One hundred into fifty. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. So this will be five thousand. Okay, so thirty-three point three three. Yes, thirty-three point three three. Yes. So you guys answer is correct. Okay, answer is correct. Good. So next we have this one. So what is answer for this one? B. Very simple question. You can see this has been asked in gate two thousand and fourteen. So, what is the question? The resistance and inductance of an inductive coil are measured using an AC bridge as shown in the figure. The bridge is to be balanced by varying the impedance Z. Okay, so we have to balance this using Z. Z should consist of an element. So, at balance condition, we know Z two into R one is equal to sorry R three into R four plus J omega L four, so Z two is equal to R one R three by R four plus J omega R three by R one L four. So Z two is similar to what R plus J omega L, or Z two is actually series combination of R and L. But here it is not asked that. So simply combination of R and L. So one thing I want to be very clear with you guys in measurement subject, there are only two types of question. Questions which you will be either able to solve, like if you see the question, you will be able to solve like this one, or there will be questions which you might not be able to solve. like we are going to see few questions when we study instrument transformer okay so those questions are very very tough so it's okay it's okay if you get those questions it's okay to skip those question because those are very very lengthy question if you get theoretical question from measurement it's okay if you are attempting if you are getting questions from cro straight forward questions you can solve those question if you are getting straight forward questions from bridge you will be able to solve those question but if you get a typical question from measurement believe me it will be very very difficult to solve okay it will be very difficult to solve is it clear any doubt so with this actually we finish the measurement of your resistance also so in the next class let us see if we can complete this q meter or not okay q meter so this is also a very very small topic so if we finish q meter then we are going to be means like in a good place okay because then this topics are going to remain oscilloscope error analysis so those are also very important topics okay so first we are going to finish all the important topics from where if questions are asked we are able to solve those questions okay then we are going to see the typical topics is it clear so today we are going to end the session over here if you guys have any doubt you can ask doubts so next class is on sunday sunday from 1 pm i guess 1 to 3 okay any doubt i will stop